Hi guys and welcome to another Elementor video. This is Jamie from System22 and WebDesignerTechTips.com. We've got one for you today. We've got a little Elementor page here and if I roll down a bit, we've got a little button. When I click on the button, it's going to toggle and show a hidden section. When I click on it again, it's going to collapse it. We're using a little bit of JavaScript and a bit of CSS for this today, but don't let that put you off. It's really easy and I'll provide you with all the code that you need. And that's a great little feature to have on your site. We've done this before with different themes, so I thought I'd show you how to do it with Elementor today. Okay, for this code today that we're actually using, I'm borrowing a bit of code from W3Schools and I'll put this link below the video right here. So we've got a bit of JavaScript here. You'll need to copy that and I'm just actually using the button I'm using my own HTML for my styling so let's get started I've got the page open here with Elementor there's the button that we created initially let's work on a different section what I'll do is I'll go down here and we'll toggle and hide a different section this time so I'm going to add a new little section inside this I want to add a little code block so go to the matrix and this is available in both the free and the pro version roll all the way down and you'll find a little HTML block there left click drag it and drop it in there there we go and if we go back to our page I'm going to take this button code right here I'm going to paste it in now mine whatever the default button is on your theme is what your buttons going to look like initially there okay so we've got a button there let's pop it into the middle because it's not a regular button we need to do a bit of styling right here and we'll do that in a minute so I'm going to go over to the advanced and I'm going to use some margin but I'm going to use a percentage right here so I'm going to just click on the percentage I'm going to uncheck the link value so we can do them all separately I'm just going to give it say 40 40 on the left not quite a bit more you can increment up and down with the little arrows 44 looks about right that's in the middle for us and you might want to adjust for tablet and on the tablet we'll uncheck the chain make sure that's unchecked we want percentage let's give it say 42 that's about right and let's have a look at on mobile whoops there we are a little bit too far again so again make sure we're on percentage uncheck the chain try 35 a little too much there we go so we got it for desktop tablet and mobile there great okay well that's our button where we want it now while we're in the advanced, I'm going to give the button a CSS class so we can style it with some custom code in a minute to make it our own. So I'm going to call it on o -N -C -L -K for on click. OK, now then what we need to do is go over here and we'll copy this bit of JavaScript right here. And if we look at this, it's telling us to get a div this function is called my functions it's telling us to target a div that's called my div now you can change this if you want to for different things because I've already got one called my div so I might change that in a minute and for having toggled different things you can give them different IDs right here and uh, so we'll do that in this example so I'm going to copy this control C and I'm going to add, add another code block or another HTML block again down the bottom here. I'm going to drop it just down below the button. Okay, now when we fill it out, it's important we put some script tags in there. This is really important. So it's left pointy bracket, the word script, and right pointy bracket. And that's open and close some script tags for us and in between we can paste that bit of code that we copied and there it is and it's asking to get the element by ID and it says my div I'm going to change that to something that I'm going to call the section 
that I want to make disappear and appear. So I'll call this dsec for disappearing section. Remember your IDs and classes really need to be unique. So don't call it anything that you've called something else. And also you want to actually call it something that's going to make sense to you. So dsec is kind of my shorthand for disappearing section. Okay, so we've got that code in there. Now that dsec, let's apply that. We'll give that an ID to the section that we want to actually make disappear with this. So let's go down and we've got these two images here. Let's just work on this section. Obviously this will work for any section. So I'm going to go into there. Just click the little middle section there. And as you can see, we're in the section. I'm going to go over to advanced and I'm going to give it an ID, not a class, an ID. It's got to be an ID. And it was DSEC, wasn't it? DSEC. Now we save our changes. Now let's have a look at the page. This should now actually work. But we want to style it a little bit more and make it our own. So there's the button that we've put in right there. And here's the section we want to make appear and disappear. So if I click, it disappears. If I click again, it appears. So that's functioning perfectly. The reason that images are changing is because you're seeing the images below. When I click on it, and this section disappears. Gone back. It's great. Got too much gap here. I'd like to kind of style this button and make it my own. And also, when we load the page initially, I don't want to see these. I want this to be off. So let's go take care of that. And we're in the section and we gave it the custom name of DSEC. So let's go down to our custom CSS and we can write it here. I've got Pro installed so I can write it on the page here in the custom CSS box. If you're using the free version, this will work perfectly fine with the free version too. You need to go to your dashboard. Let's go to the dashboard down to appearance and to customize at the bottom of the page you're going to find an additional CSS box this is where you want to write your CSS code if you're using the free version and it's a good idea to give it a title so you know what it is but for mine today I'm going to write it in here so we can see what's going on okay so we gave this the title or the CSS ID of DSEC so IDs, all IDs have to have a hashtag in front of them. So it's hashtag, then the name, DSEC. And what do we want it to do? Well, I'm going to open and close some curly brackets. And in between, we can write our code. I just basically do not want it to be there. So I'm going to say display, colon, none, semicolon. As you can see, it's disappeared. Great. Now I'm going to get rid of a bit of space around this button here. So I'm going to go into this section by clicking on the blue tab right here. I'm going to go over to advanced. I'm going to put a zero in. Make sure you keep that checked. It'll do all four at once. If I put the zero in the padding there, that'll take away most of the padding around it and give us a lot skinnier button, which is great. Okay, well, let's have a look at this. Let's update. Roll on down. There's a button, a lot less space there. Of course, the code doesn't show up below it, which is great. So we haven't got our section in there. So let's click on it. There's our section. There it is. Now you may notice with this, once it's hidden, you're going to have to click twice the first time you click. So if you click, nothing happens. You've got to click again and they'll appear, disappear. Very easy. Great. OK, and now let's start our button to be more in keeping with whatever it is. So we've got it where we want it. We've given it a class, I believe. Let's go into the button, little blue tab. Yeah, we gave it a class of on click or on CLK. So I'm gonna copy that. And again, custom CSS. And remember, if you're using the, the free version, you'll need to do it in your additional CSS over here. It'll work just exactly the same way. So 
This time it's a class. All class names have to have a dot or a period in front, then the class name. And we're actually targeting the button because the, the on click is the actual module itself. And if we look at the content within the module, we've got button. So we want to target the button. So we're going to say dot on click button. And let's see, what do we want to do with this? Again, I'll drop down, open some curly brackets. First, let's change the background color. Let's just make it blue for argument's sake. You can put anything in there you want, like a hex code. That's fine. Let's give it some slightly rounded corners. And to do that, we use border radius. Border dash radius. Colon. And I'll just give it a little bit, say five picks. There we go, that's made it slightly rounded. If you want to make it completely rounded, give it like 50 picks or something like that. And you can make it into a sort of pill shape button. If you want to make it wider, you can add padding left and right. So let's say padding. If I give it one number, it'll give it padding all around. So if I was to give 20 pixels, gives it that amount of padding top, bottom, left and right. If I give it 20 pixels and then say 40 pixels, the first number will be top and bottom. Second number, 40 pixels, will be left and right. So you can make it as wide or however you want it. But anyway, I want my borders not to be quite as wide as that. So let's just keep it on five. There we go. That's absolutely fine. OK, well, we can set a hover state for this button, too, if we want to. So if I just click or copy the class name and the button right there, control C to copy. And I'll drop down a couple here, paste that in there. OK, and right after the N of button right there, I'm going to put a colon, no space after the N, and then no space after the colon and the word hover, H-O-V-E-R. We'll open and close some curly brackets. And what do we want to do? Well, let's change the background color to say red on hover. Obviously, put in whatever color you want. You can use hex codes, RGBA, whatever. As you can see, that turns to red. There we go, that's working. Now, the only other thing I want to do is remove that underline there when we hover over it. And that's text decoration. So we'll put that in the regular state, not the hover state. And it's text decoration. It's prompted us. Let's put the auto fill in. And all I need to say is none. There, N O N E, semicolon. Now that's gone. Great. So that's looking how we want and functioning how we want. So let's update and take a look at it on the other end. There's our first button. There's our second one. When I click on it, there we go. It's opening those images for us or that section for us. That can be anything in that section that you want. And it's changing color for us. Now, the only th other thing we haven't covered is the actual text within the button itself. If you want to change the text in the button, let's go back. And our content. This is my function. Click me button. Where it says click me there. Just write in whatever. And make sure you don't lop off the little pointy brackets that are either side of it. So we'll say more images or whatever you want to say within yours as you can see that's changed that let's just quickly update and go on down there we have it there's how to toggle a section on and off with a button Really easy to do, like I say, I'll give you the link to the W3 Schools page and also the CSS that I've written for the button, I'll put down below. And that's a great little feature to have on your site. So I hope you've enjoyed this today and found it useful. If you have, please give it a thumbs up, ring the bell, comment, share and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Once again, this has been Jamie from System22 and WebDesignAndTechTips.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.